Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Physios Healing Touch. So today I will clear your doubt regarding two terms that you might have come across with in your physiotherapy clinic and those are true leg length discrepancy and apparent leg length discrepancy. So first of all, leg length discrepancy means if one leg is shorter than the another leg, then that is considered as leg length discrepancy and it is of two types true leg length discrepancy and apparent leg length discrepancy. So first of all, I will tell about true leg length discrepancy. I will also tell you how to measure both these type of discrepancies. So first is true leg length discrepancy. So whenever there is any anatomical or structural change in bony component of lower limb, then due to that leg length discrepancy is known as true leg length discrepancy. Like suppose in this diagram, this is a normal leg and in this leg, there is coxa vera. As you can see, this is normal, but in this leg, there is presence of coxa vera. And due to, due to this coxa vera, which is a type of structural change. So it is a type of a structural change in bony structure of femur. So due to that, there is leg leg length discrepancy. You can see. This leg is shorter and this is normal. That's why if there will be any change in the anatomical structure of bony component of lower limb, then that is known as true leg length discrepancy. Now let me give you one more example. Suppose a person suffered from comminuted fracture in which there is more than one piece of bone, more than two pieces of bone. So bone got broken into many pieces. So after comminuted fracture, when bone got healed, so after healing of the fracture, the femur becomes short, then automatically this limb will appear short and that will also considered as true leg length discrepancy because in this, the femur is short. So there is change in the anatomical structure of bone. So that's why it will be considered as true leg length discrepancy. So if there is any malunion after fracture or if there is any short femur, short tibia present in any patient, and due to that leg length discrepancy is known as true leg length discrepancy. Always remember if there is any change in the bone of the lower limb, change in any structure, anatomical structure, then that will be considered as true leg length discrepancy. Now for measurement of true leg length discrepancy, make sure that patient is in supine line and the pelvis is at the same level. So both the ASIS should be at same level. Make sure both the legs should be parallel to each other and it should be 4 to 8 inches apart as you can see in this video. So now to measure it, you have to start from ASIS. So you have to start measuring from ASIS and it will go up to the medial malleolus of the foot. So you can see it will go up to the medial malleolus. So you have to measure both the length and see if there is any difference in the values. If there is difference, then there is true leg length discrepancy. But sometimes the result can be inaccurate in case patient has muscle vasting or obesity or muscle bulk in one leg, then this values can differ. So you can try another method in which first you have to start measuring from ASIS the same way like previous. So you have to start from ASIS and end it at lateral malleolus. If you will measure up to the lateral malleolus, it is less likely to be affected by muscle bulk. It is a better way to measure than the previous one. If you find both the values normal, but still patient has leg length discrepancy, then it is due to apparent leg length discrepancy. Now the next type is apparent leg length discrepancy, also known as functional leg length discrepancy. So in this type of leg length discrepancy, there is no any kind of fault in any bony structure of lower limb. So all the bony structure or anatomical structure of lower limb will be same, will be normal. But still patient will have leg length discrepancy and that is due to compensation. Patient adapts to any kind of pathology present in pelvis or spine or lower limb and patient adapts to that pathology and due to that adaptation, due to that compensation, patient will have leg length discrepancy. I will explain you with an example so that you can understand it better. Now suppose a person has scoliosis. So due to the scoliosis in the spine, patient one 
pelvis got lifted and because of this lifting the patient shows leg length discrepancy so the pathology was in the spine but still patient has leg length discrepancy and it is due to patient compensated patient adapted due to that pathology and patient got leg length discrepancy so there was no fault in the tibia or femur there was no any bony structural deformity but still patient has leg length discrepancy and it is due to any pathology or any uh, contracture formation in joint or muscles so all these can contribute to apparent leg length discrepancy so you can remember true and apparent leg length discrepancy by in true leg length discrepancy there is deformity in structure of bony component but in apparent leg length discrepancy there is no fault in bony structure of lower limb but there can be any contracture in muscle or any pathology due to which patient adapted to that pathology and got leg length to measure apparent leg length so discrepancy no start from umbilicus so or tip of siphoid process up to the medial malleolus and measure both the legs and check if there is any difference in the results So this was a short video about types of leg length discrepancy and how to measure these discrepancies. So I hope you like my video and please subscribe to my channel Physios Healing Touch and see you in my next video.